Today I'm bringing you a selection of watch stories from around the world, both good and bad and some outright weird. Let's take a look. I brought in a Rolex watch that I had purchased while I was in the military. Now this guy will know that his watch is worth a good amount already because who doesn't know that Rolex watches are desirable? But because this is a Paul Newman dial 6263 Daytona, it's going to be worth a lot more than he expects. The amount that you paid, you even got a 10% discount. It says $345.97. What was salaries back then? Range between three and $400 a month. Average salary in the UK per month today is about £2,750, around $3,300. A Daytona costs four to five times more, if you can get one. But the reason this chap was able to get one back then, and at a discount, was because nobody wanted one, especially not that dial style. I noticed that most of the pilots that were flying those aircraft wore Rolex watches. Rolex had been very clever in the 1950s with the Submariner and GMT Master, making sure professionals were seen to be wearing them, which of course made them very desirable. The Daytona, however, first seen in 1963, didn't work out so well. The original name, Cosmograph, I think indicates an intention to have it worn by astronauts, but Omega got there first. It was briefly called the Le Mans and then the Daytona to make it a driver's watch, but that just didn't stick. There were around 10,000 6263s made in total, with dealers offering a switch to the Paul Newman exotic dial to tempt someone to buy them over a Submariner or a GMT. The exotic dial was so unpopular, however, that only a few thousand were ever sold, and only a few hundred in this Oyster configuration. Let's see what happens when he finds out how much it's worth. Your watch at auction today, five hundred to seven hundred thousand dollars Sure good. No, I'm very serious. What your watch says about you. Apple Watch. You got an Apple Watch, you're obsessed with your phone to the point where you gotta have it on you at all times. You can't miss any notifications. Someone texts you, you need to know immediately. You really gotta take it easy. You're doing too much. <laughs> Chill out, man. Put the phone away. Honestly, I agree with this. We're so attached to devices. I don't need a device to tell me to look at my device. What's next? An Apple ring that lets you know to check your Apple Watch. No, Apple, forget I said anything. Or maybe you're a fitness guy or girl and you're tracking your calories, in which case I'll allow it. Fitness seems to be the main reason people wear a smartwatch and, and that's cool. Although there's a lot to be said about obsessing over health data. I'm talking screening, lead time bias and overdiagnosis. There's a great video by Medlife Crisis on it. I'll put a link in the description below. And stop wearing these with suits. You look like Spy Kid. Knock it off. <laughs> oh, that's so true. Just get yourself an AP. Why don't you guys just buy APs and wear those with your suit? Why don't I buy an AP? I can think of 67,985 good reasons why I don't buy an AP. 20 years before the Apple Watch as we know it today, there was this, the very first Apple Watch. Wow, that's terrible. The current Apple Watch was a collaborative design between legends Johnny Ive and Mark Newson. This 1995 one looks like it was designed by Elmo. You can pick one up for about $500. In May of 1995, Apple released Macintosh System 7.5, and to encourage people to buy it, they offered a free gift. You could either choose a copy of Conflict Catcher 3, or you could get an Apple Watch. There was another Apple Watch released at the same time for the Japanese market for the release of the Power Macintosh. Ironically, where that other 1995 Apple Watch had a Japanese movement, this one for Japan had a movement made in China. In 1982, Rolex came out with the GMT Master 2, which allowed true GMT function. This means you can either have two or three time zones. Rolex were very clever in making their first GMT Master. Adding a 24-hour hand to the existing Turnograph watch was easy, but making it independently adjustable wasn't. So they used the Turnograph's bezel to set the new time zone instead. One of the coolest features about the GMT that nobody knows about is a compass feature. With the Mercedes hand pointed towards the sun, we can see that the GMT hand will face true north. So the GMT hand does need to be set to the same time as the rest of the watch for it to work, but it does work. Bear in mind though that the GMT hand will be pointing north in the northern hemisphere and south in the southern hemisphere. 
Why does it work? Because watches, even the direction the hands turn, are based on the use of a sundial. The 12 hour hand corresponds with the 12 hours of the day we see the sun for, and the 24 hour hand, the rotation of the earth. You can actually do this trick with an analog watch, point the hour hand at the sun and bisect the larger section to 12, and you've got north. Come with me to buy a Rolex. I believe you can't just go to buy a Rolex. You have to put your name on a waiting list. And I was on a waiting list for about four months before I got a call. It seems crazy to me that Rolex wait lists are becoming common knowledge. And it's true, there are many Rolex models that you can't just buy and some you can't even get on the wait list for without buying other watches or jewelry first. They only give you like two seconds to say yes or no before it's sold to the next person. I believe this is because Rolexes are an appreciating asset. When demand outstrips supply, you can end up with a situation where a product like this Rolex becomes worth more immediately after purchasing it. It's basically like the dealer giving you a watch and a bag of money. Buying process was like 15 minutes. You have to sign some papers and then they give you the watch's birth certificate. Whilst Rolex dealers don't make you sign anything to say you can't sell it, they do remove the protective stickers so the watch can't be sold as new. Not that it makes much difference. Some dealers have even been known to request seeing previous purchases before authorizing a new one and even withholding warranty cards for a year after purchase. <laughs> If you would like to support me and the channel, you can do so by picking up some of my merch below the video or even one of my novels over on Amazon. Links in the description. Thanks very much. I don't know. Two more watches I'll show you. Here's one of them. Okay. It's a two-tone sub. What are you asking for? 12.5. Now, what I don't get about this scenario is that it's a trader selling to another trader. Why not sell directly to the public? Well, because you need customers, and to get customers, you need marketing, and to keep the customers, you need customer service, and all of those things cost money. Unfortunately for those of us who want to buy a watch to, you know, wear and enjoy, this drives the end price up higher and higher. Three months ago, then I said it's excellent price, but today's a little bit different. At the beginning of 2022, watch prices had soared to the highest they've ever been. By the end of 2022, not so much. It's like a game of musical chairs. When that happens, you don't want to be the one left holding the watch. Except if you want to keep it. And if you do, all that doesn't matter because you're not going to sell it anyway. At least, not in the short term. Even now, if he kept that watch for another five years, he'd be fine. I'm trying to make a little bit of money. Make me 400 bucks at 12. I hate when people tell me how much they pay. This, you gotta make money, no? I, I would hope so. I don't want to keep eating ramen at night. Seems a bit unfair to film the guy and then tell him you need 500 bucks to eat ramen. 11 .9. Done. Thank you, my son. Thank God. This is a SAS Explorer 2. The most rare Explorer 2. For those of you who don't know, the SAS stands for Special Air Service. Super Army Soldiers. and it's the UK's elite special forces unit, the equivalent to the US's Delta Force. You might think it was the equivalent of the Navy SEALs, but that would be the SBS, the Special Boat Service. You could only buy this watch in 2012 through Rolex London, and if you were a serving member. The Special Air Service isn't actually an airborne division. The name was given at its 1941 founding as part of a disinformation campaign to deceive the Axis into preparing for a paratrooper attack. It's actually a ground-based commando unit. It's special for two reasons. One, to celebrate the SES, but two, this was actually made by Rolex. Rolex very rarely do official collaborations with their watches. The British Armed Forces seem to be the exception, with a previous generation Explorer II being made for the Special Reconnaissance Regiment in 2007, and a Deep Sea for the Royal Navy Clearance Branch in 2013. So this is supposed to be a spy watch that has night vision. I can think of only one reason why someone might want a spy watch. So this is a clork and it also retorts. <laughs> Just thought you guys should know that. I'm imagining any actual spies that need covert recording equipment would rather put their trust in a product that at least has the correct spelling. I think that little blue lens is the camera and the other three are IR blasters. I mean, that thing's as discreet as a fire alarm at a funeral. Now, it's not strictly night vision, which amplifies the existing light to see better. It's just using light we can't see. But the camera can, 
infrared to illuminate dark shots, just like a home CCTV camera. Hold this, and I think we're recording right now. Some phone cameras can even detect infrared light. If you have an old school remote control, try pointing it at your phone camera in a dark room and you might see it. If I could take a guess, it looks like that watch took a fall from a motorbike on its owner's wrist. Ask me how I know. Inside should all be fine, just needs taking apart and cleaning. The mainspring barrel looks a bit scratched, perhaps from being reassembled incorrectly in the past. Looks like the mainspring snapped. Can't be from overwinding, as it's an automatic watch with a clutch that protects against that. Older mainsprings were more prone to breaking and are still replaced as service. Newer alloys are more durable, but fatigue plus a shock could have caused this one to go. You can also see more evidence of it being incorrectly opened in the past. The problem with mainspring breakages is the sudden dump of torque through the movement, which can have repercussive issues like bending and even breaking the teeth in the gear train, so it all needs to be properly inspected. A new crown, a new crystal, and the rest seems to have been nicely repolished. Good job. Good afternoon, sir. Hmm, who's this idiot now? Good afternoon. Uh, may I see the Rolex in the window, please? That slap was actually done 15 miles apart. It's a testament to Tom's acting skills. You can see here these watches are for exhibition only. It says right there. They're not for sale. What you're seeing from me there isn't actually acting. I always talk to Tom like that. Uh, can I join the waitlist then? <laughs> Funny story, while we were recording that, Tom actually started choking on a fly. It was good. So we worked it into the script. If you've seen any more watch videos you think I should take a look at, let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this, please do like and subscribe, and make sure to put the milk in before your cereal. See you later. Still here? Watch this video next.